I wrote a book called Two Second Lean, as Greg probably described a little bit. And the premise of the book is so simple. Basically, you can make one small, little tiny improvement every day for the rest of your life and completely transform your life and your organization and everybody in it. That simple. Now, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars learning this, if not millions of dollars, and have traveled all over the world in 50 countries, been in manufacturing plants from Jaguar to Toyota to Bombardier, you name it, I've been there. And I've learned a lot in the last 14 or 15 years. In the next 40 minutes, I'm going to share that with you. But first, I want to introduce you to my team. These are the guys and girls that every day make one two-second improvement before they ever work. You see, we have created a discipline of improving and then working. And the net result is, as Greg described, pretty astounding. Our company is sought after by companies all over the world to teach them how to build this very simple culture of continuous improvement called lean manufacturing. But it doesn't mean it's just for manufacturers, it's for everyone. Because everything in your life is a process, and I mean everything. How you brush your teeth, how you get your car keys, how you make your lunch, how you answer your emails, everything, everything, how you pack for this trip, how they prepared the sound equipment up here, how they set the table is a process. And every process can be improved continuously and relentlessly. And when you create a culture that does that, game over, everything changes. We're a product development company. We make woodworking tools and equipment. First product was a cover cap, peel and stick, the simplest idea in the world to cover a screw hole inside of a cabinet. Next one was a laser jam, my wife and I standing there, to position a laser to set cabinets more efficiently. Notice a trend here? Kaizen foam, a way to organize all your tools effectively. Uh, best fence system, the most state-of-the-art chop box, miter box soft fence system in the world. We make all kinds of stuff. 700 products, 40 countries, 2,700 distributors worldwide. Crazy, crazy life I have. So much fun. So that's who we are. Now, I'm a very goal-oriented person, whether I'm getting my pilot's license or graduating from Viola or becoming an Eagle Scout. Whatever I'm doing, I'm very laser-focused. And I'm laser-focused this morning, and my goal is simple for you. When you walk out the door today, I want you to see waste like you've never seen it before. I want you to say to yourself, oh my gosh, this is crazy what this guy was talking about. I had no idea. And I'm going to illustrate that by showing you a simple little video on how to change the tire in a car. You see, if you really want to see waste and you want to understand what waste is all about, all you got to do is just say, you got a flat tire. Angst comes over you. You feel tension. You go, oh, man, how do I do it? Because the instructions aren't clear. The manufacturer didn't think of you because you're the customer because everything's about you, the customer. They didn't think about you. So they make it difficult. So I'm going to show you what a bad tire change looks like, and then I'm going to show you world class. You ready? Here's a bad tire change. So here's these guys waiting to change the tire on this race car, and the customer is the guy in the car, okay? You've got to ask yourself, is he happy? Come on, guys, I'm in a race. Guy standing around, waste. Gets the tire, oh, he's standing around some more, waste. Yep, let's get that tire changed. Yep. Defect. Okay, so we just covered two of the waste. Waiting and a defect. You see, there are eight wastes, and they're surrounding you every day. As a matter of fact, there's a tornado of waste going around you every day. There's a tornado of waste going around me, and I teach this all over the world. You see, we are waste mongers. Now, let me show you world class. Let me show you the world that I live in every day. It is magic from start to finish. In the pit lane, out of everybody. This is Fernando Alonso's stop. Uh, it was actually the fastest single stop. And look at the guys. They look so relaxed. But there he goes. Uh, all four wheels changed and out in 3 seconds. Watch it seconds. one more time. And, and the most important the thing is notice the stress on this the people Fernando doing Alonso's the task. Uh, see if they look stressed the out or see if they feel the like they're part of a world-class so cl team. Uh, oh, no big deal. I just changed the tire on, four, on a car in three seconds. It's the world I live in. 
From the time the order comes to our company to the time it's in the UPS truck, truck, manufactured, packaged, invoiced, and in the truck, two hours. Crazy. Flow. We don't work in the emergency room at FastCap. We don't work in crisis management. Because every day when those people come to work, they're improving processes, like changing tires, hypothetically. And they're making the process so easy that when they have to perform it, they walk up, done, and it's in the truck. It's not like, oh, did someone remember to order that stuff? No. We have Kanbans, which are management systems for our inventory, everywhere throughout our facility, thousands of them. We have flow. Processes are easy because we are committed first before we make woodworking tools and equipment to improve the way we make woodworking tools and equipment. Our job is not to make woodworking tools and equipment. Bear with me. Your job is not to do what you're doing. It's to improve the way you do what you're doing. And when you do that, you have flow, evenness, and world-class performance. You don't do it at a seminar like this. You don't do it in a monthly retreat. You don't do it in a weekly meeting. You do it every day, the first thing you do when you go to work. You improve, then you work. So I know there's all kinds of you number crunchers out there saying, well, 20 guys. So what? 20 guys, three seconds? Or two guys an hour, rework, and they lost the race. The ground rules for this talk are simple. Lean is simple, and lean is fun. A lot of people have taught lean to be very complicated. I can't teach it that way. I'm a D student, man. I had to make it simple. I struggled through school. I had dyslexia. I had flat feet. I'm Greek. I got more problems you can imagine. Can you imagine the financial statement of my company being Greek? I mean, that's a problem. But we don't have any financial problems. We make life so complicated, so complicated. To illustrate, here you go. As I told you, I fly all over the world. I'm always somewhere. I got this airline ticket from Delta Airlines a while back, and I looked at it and I go, wow, where am I supposed to be? What gate? What time? When's it board? I'm like, look at that. I go, this is crazy. This is a billion-dollar company. I've got three or four different fonts going on. Things are not lining up. What a nightmare. How in the world can anybody read that ticket? Now, I want you to know that millions of customers all day long are tortured by this nonsense. This is happening everywhere. Yeah, for sure, right? But here's the astounding thing. Are you ready? Because this is going to blow you away because it blows me away. Because I've taught my people how to see waste. I've taught them how to continuously improve. I've taught them not to settle for anything, but to continuously improve everything. And I gave this ticket to my daughter who's 20 years old, graphic designer, junior college, and I gave it to my 25-year-old graphic designer at my, at my work. I said, could you create me a lean airline ticket? Ten minutes later, you ready? Ten minutes later, a billion-dollar company or a 25-year-old and a 20-year-old? Ten minutes later. Hello? Now, come on. Think about that. Could it be any more simple? Visual controls. I'm going from Seattle to JFK. There's absolute total clarity. I could never screw this up. Any ticket that's ever handed to me, I know where I'm going. And the gate, what gate am I supposed to be at? There's a picture of a gate. Right? What time am I boarding? There's someone getting on the plane. Where am I sitting? Oh, is that an aisle seat? Is that a window seat? Is that a center? Oh, no, no. Graphically, it shows that I'm in the front of the plane. I'm on the aisle. And what time's the plane leave? 3.15. Now, a billion-dollar company, you'd think they could figure this out. This is lean. This is making everything simple. Work should be so easy. Work at our company is easy. When people walk in, they always say, how come your people are so happy? Work's easy. How come there's no stress in the air? Work's easy. Why is work easy? Because we improve first. And then we work. Their job title is process engineers. 
Now, there are a lot of great lean thinkers out there, but the best one of all time might surprise you. His name is Steve Jobs. May have been difficult to work for if you read his book, but he's my personal hero. Because no one understood lean more than Steve Jobs. Watch. Now, why do we need a revolutionary user interface? I mean, here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And what's wrong with their user interfaces? Well, the problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40 there. It's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there. And they all have these control buttons that are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface, a slightly optimized set of buttons just for it. And what happens if you think of a great idea six months from now? You can't run around and add a button to these things. They're already shipped. So what do you do? It doesn't work because the buttons and the controls can't change. They can't change for each application, and they can't change down the road if you think of another great idea you want to add to this product. Well, how do you solve this? Hmm. It turns out we have solved it. We solved it in computers 20 years ago. We solved it with a bitmap screen that could display anything we want, put any user interface up, and a pointing device. We solved it with the mouse, right? We solved this problem. So how are we going to take this to a mobile device? Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. A giant screen. Now, how are we going to communicate this? We don't want to carry around a mouse, right? So what are we going to do? Oh, a stylus, right? We're going to use a stylus. No. No. Who wants a stylus? You have to get them and put them away and you lose them. Yuck. Nobody wants a stylus. So let's not use a stylus. We're going to use the best pointing device in the world. We're going to use a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with 10 of them. We're going to use our fingers. Right underneath your nose. That product, the iPhone, my phone, probably the greatest innovation in the last 50 years, in my opinion, the last 100 years. I could run my entire company from this. I communicate with people all over the world with this. He made it so simple, my 88-year-old mother competently works on this because he understood the power of simplicity and elegance. And we have a propensity, a predilection to complicate everything. All this innovation is right under your nose. You have no idea what can happen to your company, your organization, whether it be faith-based or for profit. Transformed. This waste, these improvements, these innovations are right underneath your nose. A week ago I was in China and I took this picture, probably one of the best photographs I've ever taken in my life. As I looked at it, I said, wow, isn't that really a word picture of most organizations? They're doing things the old way. They're not innovating. They don't understand waste, and they're getting passed up. It's a beautiful picture, but it's also very interesting to contemplate. Now, I love lean thinkers, and I come in contact with them all over the world, wherever I travel. I get emails nonstop. I get like 100 emails an hour. It's just like just washing over me that all these improvements that people are making. And I got this one about three or four weeks ago, and it just blew me away. Now, I know this is not the right audience to talk about beer, but we're going to talk about beer. So here is Lean at a very high level. The best place to see Josh Springer's invention is at a ball game, but away from the action. How simple is the technology? It is, it's very simple. It's very, very simple. To fully appreciate it, you need to have two traits. One, you hate standing in line. 
two, you have an affinity for beer. I got Bud Regular, um, I got Michelob Ultra. I, I don't, I'm the kind of guy that won't wait in a beer line. I go to the event, I pay good money for the seats. So just to prove to himself it could be done. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. He set out to end the beer line forever with a dispenser that pours the beer from the bottom up. The speed is something to behold. Springer says he holds an unofficial world record for pouring 56 beers in one minute. His videos on YouTube have gone viral. Why do you think people get so excited seeing a beer uh, filled up from the bottom? That's a great question, but I still kind of giggle when I see it happen too. It just kind of it captivates you. So how do you fill a beer up from the bottom? Well, as you may have suspected, there's a hole in the bottom of the cup. But the key to making all this work is with this, a simple magnet. So when you put, put the cup on here, the magnet is suspended, and then the liquid comes in, and then you just... Right, the liquid comes in from, from around the holes or underneath the magnet. Once the beer is filled, just grab the cup, and the magnet forms a perfect seal with a tin ring embedded in the cup. What do people do with the magnets when they're done with them? They take them home and put them on their fridge. Which leads to Springer's second great idea, get advertisers to put their logos on the magnet. Genius? Simple? Wow? It's the world I live in. It's the world. This is what happens in my company every day. I mean, I have someone walk up to me and say, it's taking me three hours to do a process, and I just cut the time in half. That's like regular stuff for us. Our sales keep going up and up and up. We've doubled our sales in the last four months. We still get all of our orders out. We haven't hired anybody else. That's the level of improvement that I'm talking about. Nine times faster. If I told you, could you make your processes nine times better, most of you would laugh at me. 10% maybe if I worked hard at it. 20 if I brought in a consultant. God forbid don't bring in a consultant. This is your job. This is my job. What did Josh do? Very simple. Josh did two things. It's all simple. Everything I do is simple. Remember, I'm a C&D student. I barely graduated from Biola. I had to work so hard. Greg will testify to that. He looked up my records. That guy went to Biola? Come on. Forget it. He saw waste. The waste, think about this. The waste was waiting in the beer line. The value added was sitting at the game watching the high-level performance of professional athletes. That was the value. There was no value in standing in the beer line. So he identified the waste, he saw the waste, and he fixed what Bud did. That's it. Game over. Talk is over. We can go home. If you can see waste and begin to systematically fix what bugs you every day, that's all you need to know. And nothing else. That's all we do at our company every day. We kept it simple. We have 100% buy-in. We kept it simple. We have the whole world wanting to figure out how we did it. And they want to complicate. We say, no, 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 no. We don't do complicated lean. I had a big organization, a big well-known author say he wanted to bring all these famous people to my organization so he could benchmark. So he could come in and see all our graphs and charts. And I said, guess what? You're not coming. There are no graphs and charts. Just smiles on our faces. Just our customers loving us because we respond to them instantly. Because we don't have an answering machine. We answer the phone. We talk to them like human beings. We don't do graphs and charts. I assure you, we have numbers that will blow most companies out of the water. But we don't do graphs and charts. We don't need graphs and charts. We need smiles on people's faces. We need people's work to be enjoyable. We need people to engage their brain and use the creativity that God implanted in every one of them to continuously improve and change the world. We went for a loan to, to build our new building a while back, and we had three banks that we said, hey, you can give us a quote on the loan. But one of the bankers, David, was so smart. He said, who's this Paul Akers guy? I'm going to go on the website, went on twosecondlean.com, went on FastCap. He goes, oh, gosh. I cannot deal with this guy the same way I deal with everybody else. So he put together a loan proposal, and he looked at it. It's 28 pages long. I don't think Paul's going to buy this. So he says, I'm going to put everything Paul wants to know, the value that Paul wants to know, the loan duration, payoff penalties, loan interest rate, APR, things like this, right? He's going to put that information on the document. 
And he walks into my office and puts it down and says, I knew that you wouldn't take the 28-page one, so this is it. Now, the other two banks gave me the 28-page document, which was total waste. I didn't want that 28-page document. I'm a business guy. I know what I need to know about a loan. I mean, you can just talk to me in about 15 seconds and tell me everything I need to know about a loan. He handed it to me, took my iPhone out, took a picture of it, handed it back. Meeting was over in five minutes. He got the deal. He got all of our accounts. We switched everything over to him. David's like, lean rocks. Now, there's someone in our community that knows a little bit about lean. And his name is Rick Warren. Rick Warren is an amazing human being. I would say transform my life. Transform many lives of my employees. Because as my employees had problems in their life, I said, have you read The Purpose Driven Life? And they said, no. I said, I've got a secret. I'm going to give you this book, and you're going to read the first sentence in it, and you're going to hand it right back to me. You don't need to read anything else, because the first sentence in the book is all you need to read. It is the answer to life. So Rick went ahead and put the answer to life in one sentence. And he sold 60 million copies. Come on, 60 million? It's like the best-selling book of all times in modern time. 60 million? Because he's a lean thinker. You ready? It's not about you. Guess what? You want to have a purpose-driven life? It's not about you. It's about being a servant leader. It's about impacting the world. It's simple. It's all simple. We make it so complicated. Give me a graph, give me a chart, follow these 10 steps and away you go. Nonsense. Become a servant leader. So where are we gonna go? I've already told you, lean, simple, and fun. I think I've illustrated that pretty clearly. I'm gonna tell you about my lean journey, how I got started in lean and what happened. And last, learning to see waste. That's the goal. If you walk out of here in the next 20 minutes and you say, Ah, oh, I see waste like I've never seen before. We win. If only five of you get this, we win. So who am I? I'm not a consultant, and I'm not a speaker, although I speak all over the world of all kinds of organizations from Discover Credit Card two weeks ago to Bombardier to you name it. I've spoke in front of them. But I am a manufacturer. I love to make things. Remember, I'm the C&D student. I'm the guy that loved wood shop. I love to build things. Everything I do is about building and creating. But most importantly of all is I'm a lean fanatic 24-7. And the reason why is because it changes people's lives. It takes a human being who is stuck, who is not confident, doesn't know how to implement and make a positive improvement in their life, and teaches them how to do it every day day for the rest of their life. And that is the most exciting thing ever. So this is how it started. 14 years ago, I became a lean thinker, although I had no idea what lean was. We were business of the year. We were making a ton of money. I had no burning platform. My company was world class by most standards at that point. Everybody was looking at us going, are you public? Can I invest in you? No, no, we're just a small little mom-and-pop private company. But I was having problems managing inventory, so I had a little problem. So I called some consultants in, and they looked around, and man, did we look good. We were buttoned down, clean, paint, floors painted. It looked like an Air, Air Force hangar. It was beautiful. All the inventory was managed. Everything looked great. And, of course, it should have looked great because at 17 years old, I went to work for Bob Taylor, building musical instruments. Made a few thousand guitars with Bob. Taught me everything I know about craftsmanship. Made a profound impact on my life. I should know what I'm doing. I went to work in Pasadena, restored some of the most beautiful homes in Pasadena up on Marengo and uh, Orange Grove Avenue. You drive up and down those streets, pretty much I'm the one that did that work. I knew manufacturing, taught industrial arts, built all the furniture in my home. I have the most spectacular home on the planet. It's a green and green home. Stunning. Built all the musical instruments in my house. I knew manufacturing. And baby, was I organized. But lean's not about being organized. So if there's some of you out here right now that are thinking, oh, I'm already kind of lean. No. 
Lean is about seeing waste. And I had no clue what waste was. Because you can organize waste, and I was the master of it. You know, when you look at my facility, I had inventory everywhere. I didn't have an order for 100 laser jam. I didn't have an order for a million fast caps, but I made them and put them on the shelf and managed them and built a bigger warehouse and more lights and more air conditioning, hired more people to dust them off, to count them. All waste. And then I found out, oh, there's another way to do business. And I had some consultants come in, and they walked around from Japan, and they said, you are clueless. You have no idea what you're doing. I'm going, business of the year. I'm making a ton of money. What are you talking about? Everybody comes in here and says, this is awesome. Everyone wants to invest in my company. They want to know when I'm going to go public. Clueless. I said, okay, what do I need to do? They said, you need to learn something called the Toyota Production System Lean Manufacturing or Kaizen. Had no clue what any of this was. It was Greek to me, and I'm Greek, and that's a problem. I didn't know that Toyota was, the, was not the only one that did lean, and that Toyota kind of originated the concept. I'm using that very loosely. There are a lot of people who have been involved in it. But that Harley Davidson, there are all these other world-class organizations like Porsche. Did you know that Porsche almost went out of business in 2000, and the Japanese came in and turned the whole thing around? Amazing story. And the Israeli Defense Forces, no wonder that little country can defend themselves so well. Imagine that. Amazon, one of the greatest retailers in the world. I love Amazon. Every time I go to shop, it's click, click, boom, at my door. I don't like it. Click, click, return, over with. Lean maniacs, over the top. They've been to our place three times to train with us. Crazy maniacs about lean. The next time you go on Amazon and you like the experience, excuse me, you love the experience, thank lean. awesome organization. Virginia Mason Hospital, the best hospitals in the world do lean. The best companies in the world, one of my favorite companies of all, Southwest Airlines, though probably the greatest lean company of all. They turn their planes in 22 minutes, their record is 10 minutes. The pilots clean the planes, the flight attendants clean the plane, everybody works together as a team, total humility, they allow their employees to express themselves. They're funny. They're humorous. I just got on a Southwest Airline to come here, and the pilot said, okay, folks, the plane's full. We're going to pack them in here like the Waffle House. I'm going, who gets to have that much fun? And then he pipes off, you know, I know you're saving that middle seat. Hope nobody sits there. You got a magazine. Pick that magazine up right now because this plane is full. And even if that person's not good looking who's going to sit down next to you, it doesn't matter because we make great drinks, and by the end of this flight, they're going to look wonderful. You know how much money Southwest Airlines is going to make this year? They're projecting a billion dollars. Do you know they fly 11 million people a month? They're the biggest. They're not the biggest airline. They're the most productive airline. They have less planes than the big guys, and they fly more people than any other airline in the world. Did you know their people are paid the highest in the world, in the industry, that should just make you smile. Lean is awesome. They keep it simple. There's no assigned seat. Why? Because they figured out that people will sit down more quickly if the seat could disappear. And they could turn their planes. And guess where the value is added? I want you to think about this. It's very important you understand value added and non-value added. Is there value added when the plane is on the ground? No! The value is when the plane is in the air, when they're moving you from A to B. There is no value added when the plane is sitting on the ground. But most people don't even know what value added is. They think it's something like, oh, I'm going to change something to this. But they don't understand that 95% of everything you do in life is waste. 95% of every process you do in your company, guess what, you guys? I know you think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. It's waste. Do you know what percentage Toyota... The leaders in the world, the best manufacturer in the world, not the best car maker in the world, they're the best car maker by 10 than anyone else. The best manufacturer in the world, you know what value added they have in their process? Are you ready for this? Sitting down, 2%. 95%, 98% of what Toyota does is waste. They're the leaders in the world. 
Imagine what it looks like in your life and my life. Disaster. Hired these consultants to come in. A couple young kids. Thought they'd tweak my great company. Totally transformed it into U-shaped cells. They took processes that were taking me 45 minutes to five minutes. They kept doing it over and over again, and I felt so embarrassed. I wanted to crawl under a hole. From 45 minutes to five minutes, that's not a nine times improvement. That's like, I don't even know how to calculate an improvement like that. It's so ridiculous. Within two months, they added $30,000 of net profit to the bottom line month after month. They were there for two weeks. Those are pretty good results. I didn't do it for the money. I just wanted my company to run smooth. I was tired of treating people in the emergency room. I was tired of being the chief firefighter. I'm the crisis management. All the problems come to me. At my company now, the problems don't come to me. My people solve the problems. Novel idea. Got on a plane, went to Japan, Started seeing things I'd never seen before. People at stand-up desks, very simple desks, not big mahogany desks, but very simple desks. I go, wow, that's different. Then I went to these factories that were doing metal work that are normally really dirty, and they look like Disneyland without the lines. I was going, wow, they have murals, they have light coming in. This company particularly had so much extra time. They were so profitable, they did so good that they spent their time in the morning cleaning two-block radius around their company. Tanaka Tech. Unbelievable. I go, yeah, I think I want to be a part of these people. I think these people know something I don't know. I went to Lexus down there at the bottom in Kishu, Japan. The smokestacks are yellow. They're yellow so that the entire community and the workforce can tell whether or not there's any pollution. Zero trash goes out of that plant. Everything is recycled. You want to talk about green? You can forget all that nonsense green that they talk about. Lean is the real green. Lean is getting people to see waste every day in everything they do. Not an initiative of recycling a bag or, tr- or a can, but in everything you do. How long do you leave the water on when you brush your teeth? You're thinking lean all the time. Lean is the real green. I said this to St. Mary's College in San Francisco last week to a bunch of environmental study students, and they were looking at me like, I never thought of it that way. Imagine that. Everything was flexible. All the Coke machines were on wheels. Everything was on wheels. Remember Steve Jobs' flexibility? Take those stupid keys away. You can't change if you build it in. When you come to my plant, almost everything's on wheels. It's magic. This is Toto, manufacturer that makes toilets. I think second largest in the world. I've been to Kohler and I've been to Toler. Uh, I've been to uh, Kohler and I've been to Toto. It's literally like going to Mars or, the, or America. I mean, to the USA. It's so different, it's not even funny. You could eat off the floor in Toto. Everything, hundreds of thousands of square feet. That's the president of the company. Zero, it says on the badge. Not Six Sigma. Zero mistakes, zero downtime, zero injuries, zero machine failures, zero. There's a reason they're smiling, because work flows. They're the best in the world. Everything was standardized. You know Southwest, you know why one of the reasons they make so much money? They fly one plane, 737. When the tire goes out, they don't go, hey, what plane? Is that 767, 757, 707, 777? No, they got one wheel. One tire fits on all the planes. When they need to train their flight attendants, guess what? They can fly on all the planes. Guess what? When the pilot needs to be transferred from one place to another, they have total flexibility because a pilot can fly any plane. They have one set of training manuals. There's a reason why they have the safest safety record in the industry. There's a reason why they make so much money, because they get lean. They've standardized everything. Just-in-time culture. Uh, this is the Tanaka Tech, the metal manufacturer. Everything arrived the day they needed it. They didn't build. They did used to, before they did lean, built a bigger warehouse, had people manage it, and then they said, oh, this is stupid. Let's just get the stuff to be delivered when we need it. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, my, my, my suppliers won't do that. It's a journey. Your suppliers will do that. You need to start working with them. 
and teach them lean as we teach our suppliers lean, and things just progressively get better. This is not like wave a magic wand, it just happens. I've been at this for 14 years, and we're still a disaster. The magic of 3 Sing. So when I went to Japan, the president of Hawks got down his hands and knees with me. That's the president of Hawks, an electronics manufacturer, supplies Toyota, and showed me leadership on my hands and knees. Kind of reminds me of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. Isn't that interesting, the parallels? You see, because lean's not, not lean. Lean is simply the gospel dressed up in a business suit. There is nothing magic about lean. It's just obeying all the principles that have been laid out thousands of years before of being a phenomenal, not a good steward, a phenomenal steward of the things that God has given you. It's about honoring the dignity of man. It's about valuing human life. It's about discipleship and relentless training. That's all it is. It's about humility. I clean the toilets in my facility all the time. If you come to my facility, which I'm not inviting you guys to come because I get three requests a day and I can't do all the tours that are asked, but you will not set foot in my facility unless you clean my toilet. It is the first thing you do when you walk in the door. We have a quick little opening session, and then we march billion-dollar companies and the presidents. The company that makes the attenuation device for the Apple iPhone, a billion-dollar company, flew in their executives from all over the world, eight of them, Japan, China, Europe, South America, Canada, the United States, all the divisions flew into the plant, and I said, look, you're going to clean my toilets. I said, we don't care. They all came in and cleaned the toilets. And they learned about humility. They learned about being on the shop floor. You know, is it interesting that Jesus was never, there was no office that you went and knocked on the door, hey, Jesus, can I ask you a question? But he was walking along the Sea of Galilee with the disciples. Total access. I have no office. I'm always on the shop floor working with my people all the time. The gospel dressed up in a business suit. And when I asked Mr. Manabi, you know, what happens when all these great companies come here, Nissan and Ford, and he says, oh, listen, smart people can't believe it can be this simple. They want to complicate everything. They got advanced degrees because they got to tell you how smart they are. They make those graphs and charts to make you feel like they're doing something. It's very simple. Sweep, sort, and standardize. First thing we do when we walk in our facility is we sweep everything. It's immaculate. It's magical clean. We sort through everything. We get rid of all the junk in our work area. So the only thing that's in the work area is that which you need. And then we create clear standards by which we do everything. Then we make a two-second improvement. Then we teach and train our people for a half hour to 45 minutes in a morning meeting. We study history, the Constitution, all of our principles. We review every mistake we make every day. We ask ourselves, how can we improve it? We meet that head on. Our people go, oh, yeah, that was my mistake. And people come to our meetings and they go, why did that person just admit they made a mistake? Well, that's our culture. That's how we improve. If we can't admit we make a mistake, how in the world can you ever improve? This is the culture that we built. So, uh, you know, if you looked at most people's desks, this is what their desktop looks like, just chaos. Papers everywhere. I mean, I've been in the best companies in the world and seen stuff I can't even believe. I can't even believe it exists. And you know what? If you need one pen, why not have 40 pens, right? I know most of you have this. This is my desk. You ready? Remember, this is a journey. I didn't get here overnight. This is my desktop on my computer here and my computer at work. There's my desk. Stand up right on the shop floor. Everybody walks up to me all day long. And that's my one drawer. I have a Sharpie in there. I have a pencil. I have a pen. A few sticky notes, which I rarely ever use. My headset my, my uh, scissors and staples. That's it. Guess what? All the desk drawers are like that. The first row is all standardized. So it doesn't matter where I go in our facility, I open it up, I always know the scissors are going to be there on the right-hand side. The second row is what I want for personal. But that's really all I need. I don't need five drawers full of stuff and little chit-chats all along the, the shelf. Because my customer doesn't care about that. My customer cares about whether or not I can make a high-quality woodworking product and deliver it to them on time, on budget, without raising the price. We had our first price increase this year in seven years. Who can say that? There's one. It's very rare. Because our incompetency, we put on the customer. 
Because we're not confronting the waste in our life, we put it on the customer. Well, the prices just went up. You know how much everything's gone up? We, we're, we're injection molders. I mean, petroleum, everything's just gone to the ceiling. We keep driving the cost down. It's very common for a process to take 10 minutes and someone walk up to me and say, I got it down to five minutes, Paul. An hour and a half, got it down to 45 minutes. Happens all the time. It's like pure joy to discover this stuff. So I came back from Japan. I started making cheesy little videos. And this is the first one I made, and this is where everything started. It's called the Lean Burrito, Seeing Waste. In an attempt to always find waste, this is my burrito that I needed. Now, they asked me when I bought it if I wanted sour cream and hot sauce. And I said yes. So instead of putting it in the burrito, they gave it to me in a separate container. I have an idea. Next time, put the sour cream and the hot sauce in the burrito. Okay, I just finished my burrito, and this is all the waste. We have the aluminum foil that's going to be thrown out, the paper that's going to be thrown out, the container from the salsa and the sour cream. We have two napkins, one I didn't use, and a whole little box here with a plastic fork and a plastic knife, all going to be put in the landfill for one burrito. All I really needed was the aluminum foil to wrap it in, and that was it. Sour cream, everything could have been inside. In one napkin, I would have made less of a mess, and I would have been perfect. Look at all the waste. Check out this waste. We did a spreadsheet. Four cents for the carton. The knife and fork, six cents. Everything added up to 31 cents of waste per burrito. 30 burritos a day, $9.30 times seven days a week, 52 weeks. $3,385 per store. If you take 31 cents a burrito times 10 million burritos a day in the U.S. alone, that's $3.1 million in the landfill. That's total waste. Okay, I'm back to the local coffee shop, curb shops, and we're going to get ourselves a lean burrito. Watch how this is done. Hi, Gina. How are you? Good. How are you? Can I get a lean burrito? Sure. I want a burrito with sour cream, hot sauce inside, Aluminum foil and nothing else in one napkin. Sounds good. Okay, okay. thanks, Gina. Here it comes, the lean burrito. What do we got? Aluminum foil, one napkin. Wow, that's amazing. Look at all the waste we eliminated. With the sour cream and everything inside. Isn't this yummy? Look at this thing. All ready to go, just the way I wanted it. Just what the customer wanted and no more and no less. Thousands of videos later, we have one company that we're working with, Walters and Wolf, has made 2,000 improvement videos of his employees seeing waste in one year. 900 union employees doing this, and it has transformed their culture. It's so simple. I spoke uh, last year at the MAP conference, and this is a letter I got from the organizer of the conference. He said, this guy was the biggest skeptic, Paul. He thought you were absolutely out of his mind. He said, two-second lean, or I read two-second lean after the benchmarking conference. I am seeing waste in my sleep right now. It is driving me crazy. When I saw Paul speak, I thought it was silly. Now I see the brilliance of a simple lean approach. I had everyone read the book. We haven't even had a single meeting on it yet. No morning walk, no daily meeting, yet people are spontaneously making improvements. You can't hold them back. Once they realize they are allowed to make their jobs better, they just go for it. Once they start to see waste, they can't help but fix it. This is the kind of picture I like to see. Right here. All the employees holding up posters of all the improvements they've made in their work that prior to that would have never been addressed. Work's getting better. Work's easier. They satisfy the customers. They go home tapping the steering wheel, feeling like, wow, this is incredible. Welcome to my world. It's pretty awesome. Lean is simple. Lean is fun. It's a great journey. It never ends. The smiles never quit. Thank you very much.